Okay, let's go back to March of 2009 uh, when 32 workers lost their jobs at the construction of the new Westgate Bridge extensions over the Yarra River in Melbourne. Um, they were sacked because the subcontractor, Civil Pacific, uh, would not pay them uh, the wages that they had negotiated with the, their unions, the CFMEU and the AMWU. Um, and this was because the head contractor refused to provide sufficient monies to Civil Pacific for them to pay those wages. Uh, the men were understandably upset. Um, a judge of the federal court uh, said in his judgment uh, about this case um, that the men were in were in shock and many were not in a fit state to drive home that day. Um, and one of the bosses at Civil Pacific, after he, after the men had been sacked, he said, "Well, you can go and apply for for employment at the head contractor at John Holland." Um, the workers. Um, tried and failed. The union was unable to get them jobs with uh, John Holland. Uh, now, the workers understandably, they were upset, so they swore at the bosses who had just sacked them and taken away their livelihood. And in retaliation, they were photographed by the security guards at the place of their work. Um, uh, so they abused the security guards. Um, and they probably used language no different to the language that Kevin Rudd would have used, or, or we know that he used now because of thanks to Laurie Oakes, we've heard we've got a bit of a an insight into what's been happening uh, when Gillard uh, got rid of Rudd. Um, and we know, for example, uh, Kevin Rudd's well known for his uh, intemperate language. Um, anyway, <laughs> Rudd's. Rudd's not in the position that these workers are in for abusing their employer. Uh, they, they got charged by the Australian Building and Construction Commission under the legislation introduced by John Howard and continued under the, uh, the Rudd Labor government and now under the Gillard Labor government. And um, what happened was that um, the union uh, organised a picket at uh, John Holland's premises uh, just near the Westgate Bridge um, and uh, they blocked entry. Um, they, they said that they would allow emergency uh, vehicles like ambulances uh, to go in but they wouldn't allow um, anyone else. So th th they were trying to protect themselves against scab labour being used by John Holland. And at this stage uh, no one, actually at no stage, did anyone from the ABCC um, allege in court that the union organisers or any of the workers tried to hide their identity in any way. At no stage did the ABCC allege in court that there were car chases or that physical violence was involved. There were plenty of threats. They, they alleged plenty of threats, but they never alleged that there was violence used against persons. Now, Gillard, we know, she's an experienced industrial lawyer, and she understands how to put together a, a brief and uh, understands the use of language in court. Um, she knows what she can get away with. Um, she knows how to gild the li lily, even. Um, now... A couple of months after the Westgate workers lost their jobs, uh, Julie Gillard spoke at the ACTU Congress in Brisbane at the Convention Centre. I was there. I listened to her speech. And I, like um, a thousand other delegates at the, the Congress, we were all wearing uh, this T-shirt. One law for all. And on the back, abolish the ABCC yellow t-shirt. Uh, one wag at the uh, Congress called out when Julie Gillard walked in, uh, just wearing a normal attire, said, Julia, where's your t-shirt, mate? Anyway, 
she was not going to be wearing any abolish the ABCC uh, t-shirt as we found out that day. Um, uh, she strolled into the, the ACTU uh, Congress and she sought to justify the keeping of the ABCC powers in a new inspectorate under her new legislation called Fair Work Australia. Um, and, 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 she so, and she chose to, to do it with the following words. There were, she said, there were, she alleged there were dangerous car chases across Melbourne involving carloads of balaclava-wearing people. There was criminal damage to vehicles resulting in arrests. There were threats of physical violence and the intimidation of individuals, including damage to a private residence. She told the conference, balaclavas, violence and intimidation must be unreservedly condemned as wrong by every unionist, every ALP member, every decent Australian. But the one thing she left out was she didn't detail the specific events where she got this information. Now, the Workers' Bush Telegraph believes that Julie Gillard was gilding the lily and she was referring to the events that had just been taken to court by her commission, the ABCC, and where allegations of threats and uh, abusive language had been made by an officer of the ABCC by the name of Andrew Williams became uh, a very big case. Um, now we know that Julia Gillard is a clever person. This, everyone knows that. Uh, and she knows how to present a brief. Now, at that conference of the ACTU, she was pressing the unions. And she was pressing because everything that she said, of course, was published in the mainstream media the following day. And since that time, we know that uh, the, uh, the federal court has made an order against the two unions involved, uh, the CFMEU and the AMWU, for a record $1.3 million in penalties. And that brings overall the penalties against the building unions under the ABCC legislation to be $3.5 million so far. Now, the unions have been able to keep Ark Tribe out of jail. Uh, the Westcote Gate workers are, out, are still out of jail. The officials there, the, the organisers, but their members' pockets are not bottomless. They're going to run out of money. And maybe ARC will avoid jail, but, but what, about, what about the organisers, Mick Powell, uh, uh, Tony Mavrobatis and Gareth Stevenson? And, and what about Kane Pearson up here in Brisbane? The, these are all organisers who, who have been charged under the ABCC legislation. So what choice do we have, given all this? Abbott would do the same thing as Gillard. Some people, or a few, they, can, they seek um, refuge and faith in the Greens in the coming election. But what about ordinary workers? We have only our unions. We don't have any workers' political organisation. We just have the unions to defend us. Um, and what I'm saying here is our unions better get organised because come the next recession, the Gillards and the Abbots of this world, they're going to take us to the cleaners. And some of us might even end up in jail. Anyway, on that rather sad note, that's me signing off. Um, well, you know, keep the faith, see how we go. Thanks a lot. Bye now.